What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and today we're going to be talking about some small gameplay that surfaced for Modern Warfare 2, a big feature being introduced and even some other surprise announcements. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and make sure you have notifications on to stay up to date with everything going on in Cold Warrior 2, Warzone, Modern Warfare 2, and any other future Call of Duty as well. Also be sure to check out my partner Gamefly, an American online video game rental subscription service that specializes in providing games for game consoles and handheld devices. The business model of Gamefly is simple. It's similar to the DVD by mail subscription service like Netflix or Blockbuster Online. Gamefly sends games to subscribers for a monthly fee. Now, I do remember Gamefly from when I was a little kid, before the digital era took over, of course, and I highly recommend giving Gamefly a shot if you're an OG gamer like I am and just want to get some physical copies of your game. They're, of course, linked down below in this video's description or even the pinned comment. Now, earlier today, we did get a new celebrity trailer for Modern Warfare 2 featuring Steve Okai. I probably butchered his name there. I apologize. I'm not familiar with the individual and then we also got a new snippet of gameplay through some short teasers we got from infinity ward over on twitter and we do see a pistol being shot we do see a clip of soap and then what looks like ghost and they are counting down to the global reveal of this game which is tomorrow time of recording this it's going to be about i think 12 p.m central that's my time 1 p.m est and it's of course on wednesday so hopefully that's really clear and the trailer is already scheduled to premiere on the call of duty youtube channel for those out there that may not be aware and don't forget, this Thursday will, of course, be about seven minutes of campaign gameplay from Summer Games Fest. And that's going to also be premiering in select IMAX theaters. I'll be streaming all these events, all of our reactions. Hope to see you guys there in my chat. I'll be scheduling my streams ASAP. So be on the lookout for that one. And I'm really happy that nothing major has really leaked out. I was actually anticipating that maybe a couple days before the scheduled premiere of the Global Reveal, somebody out there would somehow hack into YouTube, would grab some gameplay screenshots of the premiere, or somebody out there would just leak footage if they're a QA tester. But luckily, none of that has happened. I do want to ensure that everybody out there is really surprised when they see the trailer, right? That's what I'm looking forward to. I think it's always a bummer when something leaks out prematurely and ends up being disappointing to the point where it ruins the entire reveal. So I think this week should be a big one for major Call of Duty fans out there. But earlier today, we got confirmation from dozens of different creators that they have been flown out as of last week to LA to actually watch and even play Modern Warfare 2 thanks to Infinity Ward. So the fact that that's happened and the fact that gaming scoopers are claiming that they saw campaign, multiplayer, and even a bit of Warzone 2, that has me anticipating a pretty big reveal after the trailer tomorrow since I'm sure content creators will end up posting full-length videos or Q&As or something of that sort to kind of talk about what their experience was at Infinity Ward and what they're able to share that the public just didn't know about yet. Now, it would definitely be a dream come true one day to get the opportunity myself and hopefully Modern Warfare 2 will be that year when I can say, hey, Infinity Ward flew me out. I could play the new DLC or the new Warzone map or whatever the case is. Very excited about the future nonetheless in terms of my production here for Call of Duty content, but definitely expect vlogs coming out from other creators as well, and I'm glad they had a good time. You know, I'm looking forward to what exclusive details they're able to share in less than 24 hours from now. But it's definitely weird how nothing was really said so far about DMZ. According to gaming scoopers out there, I think the creators that got flown out last week didn't hear a thing about DMZ. So I'm curious if at some point later this summer they'll have a separate event where they fly people out to play DMZ. They might even have a DMZ beta of sorts, similar to how Blackout got a beta during Black Ops 4. So I wouldn't be shocked if this new experience for COD also gets some type of early access event before the official launch of the game on October 28th. But you guys may have also noticed that the same usual suspects who typically data mine early content, reveal some early details, they actually are posting pictures now of being able to boot up the Modern Warfare 2 application via Cold War. So as you guys know, and as I covered in my video yesterday, the new Cold War patch didn't add very much. We have another patch coming out in the next couple of weeks to add in more bundles and possibly some other surprise content. I talked more about that in my last video, of course, but the patch did in fact add the Modern Warfare 2 pre-order options to the item shop. They're not public just yet, but they're there in the files, and somehow I guess people found a way to force load the MW2 app. I'm sure nothing happens when you open it, right? It'll probably just crash, but if it does actually open open and show people something. I wouldn't be shocked if some massive leaks start pouring out around Twitter over the next couple of days. So be aware of that if you guys out there do follow any of the usual suspects that post early content online. Now yesterday we got a really crazy report from Ralph's Valve in which he made an article talking about Modern Warfare 2 introducing a map editor. Yes, you heard that right. I'll have the article linked down below in this video's description. But as this person went ahead and said in the article, maps have almost become synonymous with what fans would consider a good Call of Duty 
title with that expectation also comes pressure on developers with creating an album of hits for one of their most anticipated titles that is Modern Warfare 2. Now, both Infinity Ward and Treyarch have plans of producing a community-led effort incorporating an offline mode equipping players with necessary tools for blocking out, mapping, and editing an already existing map, making relatively simple changes with a focus on altering the gameplay experience, paving the way for creatives to create. Modified maps will allow each creator the option of customizing spawn points, objectives, and restrictions with the addition of completely changing the scenery of a level and its individual properties, such as crates and containers. Altered maps will be closely regulated. If a creator is approved, they will receive a verified check mark. Development for this mode was made fairly early in development, originally proposed and presented throughout Modern Warfare 2019's life cycle, with an emphasis on player experience. Infinity War plans to also involve the community in an effort by the studio to produce the ultimate playing experience. Now, what comes to mind initially is that this will be huge for the competitive scene, right? If, for some reason, the pro players are like, hey, Infinity War, we don't like your spawn points, we don't like this part of the map design, or XYZ, the map editor will come in handy to then modify one of those features, right? Maybe the official CDL team or somebody at Activision can go ahead and listen to that feedback and then adjust the maps accordingly so that the maps play better during competitive tournaments. That's the first thing that comes to mind for me, but other than that, this is definitely an offline experience. So, for example, right, you go ahead and modify, let's say, Terminal or whatever map is in multiplayer to your liking, and then you can invite your friends to a private match and you know host a tournament host a private one or stream yourself spectating how your friends are experiencing your build of that map but it's not necessarily a map builder right that's something that you guys should really notice right with the wording of this article it's not something where you can build your own maps just modify existing ones in this game and i would hope that whenever a new multiplayer map gets added into modern warfare 2 it immediately becomes available for map editing if you guys do want to go ahead and do that but i think what's really fascinating is the verified check mark part of of this report here because I do believe if you are a verified editor and get that check mark there is a possibility that maybe Infinity Ward can take your custom build of whatever the multiplayer map is and throw it into the public rotation online that hasn't been confirmed yet but that's kind of the thing that I think is implied here with this article, which is that maybe if Infinity Ward is like, hey, the community actually fixed this multiplayer map, they made the spawns better, or made this map more interesting now, let's throw that into actual online multiplayer. Maybe that's something that's being considered and could be possible from a verified editor that has that check mark. Now, this is definitely getting closer to maybe a future feature where you can actually build your own multiplayer map, and then if that's approved, it'll get added to the public online experience. That's, of course, similar to Fortnite Creative, which people out there have made some pretty interesting experiences through that, and then Epic Games would see how cool that is and how popular that little map could be, and they'll throw it into online public gameplay. That could be possible in the future, especially considering that Call of Duty is returning to Steam, at least that's what we assume right now. It looks like Call of Duty on PC will be available for both Steam and Battle.net, so with Steam support coming back, that could mean we get a workshop of sorts in the future for you to be able to maybe edit maps and have that be publicly playable or create your own map from scratch and have that publicly playable in a future Call of Duty installment. That's something that I wouldn't put past Activision to eventually invest in. Now, we then got some really interesting follow-up tweets from Gaming Scooper, the Ghost of Hope, who said, and I quote, it'd be funny when the time comes if Infinity War devs are scratching their head, wondering why the maps people make with the map editor have no doors and no safe spaces are the most popular. And again, this is a map editor, not a map maker. I'm sure a map maker will eventually come out in the future for COD, whether it's Modern Warfare 2 or a future game, but I definitely think it'll be funny if people could take these existing maps in MW2 multiplayer and somehow remove all doors and windows and fix the spawn points to make them a smoother playing experience. So in that case, yeah, I would agree with this tweet. It'll be funny if Infinity Ward sees that and they're like, hmm, people out there really do like the traditional play style that really isn't that messy type of map design that we had in MW2 2019. So I'm curious what the future will hold for MW2 multiplayer, but then a follow-up tweet again says, the best comparison for this Modern Warfare 2 map editor is Halo 3's Forge mode. Not really creating per se, you're more so just editing pre-existing maps to make them function as competitive maps if they aren't already. I'll put some images or even footage on screen of Halo 3's Forge mode so you guys can see. That's the comparison being made right now by the individuals who have seen footage or images of this map maker, or excuse me, map editor behind the scenes. The Ghost of Hope also claimed that he actually heard about this a couple of weeks ago, but that it was Ralph's report to actually 
post first. So that's nice that he let him cover the news first. He got to break the news as of yesterday. And I'm wondering when exactly they'll confirm this officially. I would assume maybe closer to the actual multiplayer reveal later this summer is when they'll go ahead and say, hey guys, this is also a feature that'll be incorporated at some point at launch or maybe post-launch. We're not sure exactly when this is coming out, but I'm really on board with this and I'm interested in how this will eventually change the future of competitive multiplayer as we know it. I think there have also been a lot of debates and arguments over the past couple of years with pro players on how a map should play, how spawn points should work, how XYZ is developed in the map, and I think this is a perfect opportunity to kind of iron and level all of that out to make sure that everybody is happy whenever the pros are playing in some competitive games. But nope, I didn't forget at the very end of this article, something really juicy was posted, right? And it says, and I quote, in addition to this newly formed sandbox, Treyarch intends to have it incorporated heavily into their unannounced free-to-play title slated for 2023. Now, if you go back to some older tweets from Ralph, we do know that there is a free-to-play game in development that has to do with building, and the Sledgehammer apparently at one point was leading that project and that would make sense because it's like yeah what is the channel really focusing on right now it definitely is in vanguard so what are they up to it has to be that right but then supposedly according to ralph as well 2023 with a zombies emoji is what he tweeted out so something zombies related is coming and if this has anything to do with whatever that project is then will it be some type of free-to-play standalone zombies experience in which you're able to modify some settings of that zombies experience like Will it be all maps ever beautifully remastered for current gen hardware and then you're able to go in and modify spawn points, barriers, lock certain doors, or add certain bosses? Will it be like custom mutations from BO4 but on steroids with current gen hardware in mind and with all previous maps, which could be how a Chronicles 2 possibly ever comes out? It could be through an experience like that where, yeah, you can play the remasters faithfully, but then you can also change a bunch of features around it with this sandbox-like feature that lets you change anything you want on pre-existing experiences. But I don't think what this is in 2023 is some type of ability to play custom maps on console. That would be good, but I think COD going back to Steam is a good step to eventually get there to where, yeah, we'll go back to having a Black Ops 3-like system where there's a workshop, plenty of custom maps you can play from, and maybe that'll come back in this 2023 standalone Zombies project or the next Black Ops game coming out from Treyarch in 2024. But I think right now, Steam aside, having this sandbox-like ability for whatever that standalone project is in 2023 is going to be huge for all platforms out there, not just PC, which I'm really excited about. Now, we then got an exclusive report from the Ghost of Hope as well, claiming Infinity Ward and Treyarch are both working closely to more tightly align the narratives of Black Ops and Modern Warfare going forward, which is ironic considering a few months ago, we also had Infinity Ward's Pat Kelly stating that when, I quote, Black Ops Cold War was added to Warzone, Warzone didn't feel like Modern Warfare anymore, but also didn't feel like Black Ops either the game just existed so it's kind of ironic that they're ensuring the future of warzone or warzone 2 i should say doesn't feel like that and that's why i suggested in a previous video that what they could do in warzone 2 is this you have your big new map that only has mono warfare 2 weapons you'll then have your smaller scaled rebirth size map which will also just have probably modern warfare 2 weapons but then if treyarch ever comes out with their own new battle royale map let's say it's the euro mountains for example that's only available in warzone 2 let's only have the black ops 2024 weapons available on that map differentiate the experiences from one another so you have a Modern Warfare Battle Royale and a Black Ops Battle Royale instead of the clusterfuck we have right now with Warzone 1 which is that you can use three different COD games variety of weapons in Caldera or Rebirth that's when things get messy and that's when things start breaking all the way around in terms of stability but I think in terms of narrative there was an attempt made to already confirm hey guys this is the brand new Call of Duty canon this is the official Call of Duty timeline now which is according to Call of Duty themselves World at War Vanguard Black Ops 1, Black Ops Cold War, Modern Warfare 2019, and then Black Ops 2. I mean, it's still made very clear on Treyarch's website that all Black Ops games are canon, but the MW 2019 is the first Modern Warfare game to be canon in the Black Ops universe. So if anything, it was kind of on Infinity Ward's end to be like, all right, how do we tie this in to the pre-existing Black Ops timeline? And I feel like there were quite a few hints dropped in the Cold War campaign. I mean, you could see Zakaev himself, and then throughout the Warzone post-launch story for MW, 
AEW's life cycle, we definitely saw a lot of Black Ops tie-in. We saw a Zombies outbreak there, so it's almost like the Dark Ether storyline in Cold War has kind of bridged the gap between the Black Ops Cold War campaign and then the Modern Warfare universe. That's helped out a lot, so that's why I'm hoping that the MW2 campaign at least acknowledges what happened in Verdansk, or maybe what happened in the past, way back when, with the Cold War storyline. I'm very curious what Easter eggs there will be to find when the campaign comes out this fall. I'm really excited to cover all of that here on the channel, of course. But also speaking of Warzone, we then got some follow-up reports from the usual scooper, Ghost of Hope, that hashtag Warzone 2 gameplay and graphics engine will both be new, same as on W2. Some creators were showing a video aboard a helicopter flying over the new map, plus 10 screenshots approximately of the map areas, and yes, the release date was also revealed. That probably will leak out at some point later tonight, or even over the next couple of weeks, or will be officially announced at some point at the global reveal this week. I'll keep you guys posted with what's going on with that, but then after that, he said, and I quote, the Modern Warfare style movement has been improved by giving the player the freedom to fire in a variety of situations, opening doors, climbing and descending the ropes, even upside down. So this is sounding promising, and I'm looking forward to whatever gets revealed at some point tomorrow. But last and definitely not least, we have even more spicy gameplay that has surfaced of Project Aurora, aka Warzone Mobile. And yes, it's for dance. Yes, it's almost a one-to-one -one of the original Verdansk as we know it. And there's a gulag, there's similar mechanics with putting on armor, uh, recoil, weapons, looting. It's very similar and it's almost as if they just easily ported over Warzone 1 onto mobile devices. That's how close it looks in terms of the adaption. But what I'll also say is that it looks rough and obviously it's going to, it's in an alpha state. People are playing it, gameplay has leaked and you can find that all over the internet. I can't put it on screen for obvious reasons but it's out there and despite how rough it looks right now i'm just hoping that the right people have played it people that are familiar with how cod mobile runs people that are really familiar with warzone altogether and hopefully all that information can really allow developers to say okay here's how we can improve it and here's when it's coming out but that is about it this has been dk dynamite leave our thoughts down below in the comment section what are your thoughts on the small gameplay that's out there right now from modern warfare 2 how are you feeling about a map editor coming to that game's multiplayer and also what are your thoughts on the other surprise announcements that we talked about really hope you've enjoyed and peace out everybody.